There was quite a few times when uh, I couldn't even go to school. Um, one of the excuses that was used for bruises or marks that I had from the abusive relationship that I had was um, biking. Biking was a uh, main excuse. I mean, it's an action sport, and I mean, obviously everyone goes through their falls, so um, if I had bruises, I'll just tell people, you know, I fell riding. A lot of people knew about my riding, and so there was always an excuse. There was always some reason I could just pull out of my head that, you know, stuff was wrong, so. I started riding um, probably about the age of 14, 15. Um, I really didn't start riding a lot until I moved here to Florida my sophomore year of high school. And um, the scene here in Orlando is a lot bigger. So that as soon as I moved here, I was going to the skate park almost like every day of the week. I'm going to the skate parks, so I was getting forced a lot. Um, I didn't really have a choice in going. It's more like a routine, just come home. I knew I was going to the skate park. And if I didn't feel like going, um, he'd just start to take stuff away. And, you know, he'd get physical. Getting physical with me, I was probably, I guess it fluctuated. Like, there were some weeks where I felt like it was every day. And then it'd be like, I guess you say good weeks, where um, there, there wouldn't be anything for like two, two, three weeks. Like, I mean, I knew who God was, and like, I believed, but um, there was, I knew that there was things I, I needed to fix and that needed to be fixed, but I didn't have the choices or the options to because of my father and the places that I've been put in because of basically the situations I had. Yeah, um, from all I guess you could say mental and physical abuse that I had had, there was, there was quite a few points where I mean I was just, I was like why am I like what am I doing here, I'm not accomplishing anything. I mean, I didn't have like good grades in school because that wasn't the priority that was upheld. And there's quite a few points I was just like, I couldn't really take it. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know how I made it through. So um, as things escalated, I, I guess you can't really say escalated, but as things grew on the howders with them realizing what was happening. Um, Miss Howder, I guess you say, asked me some questions. And I confessed to her, I told her what was really going on. And um, she told me that life shouldn't be the way I was living it. And like, that's not normal. And she said that like, there's ways I can get help and so. I guess that was step one of coming to a better life. And it was scary, but I could tell it was the right thing to do. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go or what was going to happen. All I knew was it was going to be better than what I was living in before. So, I mean, I didn't know where I was going to go. And then the Howders told me that, you know, um, if you don't have anywhere to go, you can stay here. And I can't thank them enough for doing what they did for me. So uh, I first came to the church with the Howders. And actually, the way I got saved was 
um, through the church. I went to Camp Decision, which is when um, it was about three in the morning, and uh, Chandler had come in the room. He was in the room next to us, and uh, he said he had a feeling, and uh, so I was like, "What do you mean, dude?" And he was like, "Have you ever asked the Lord to be your, like the leader of your life?" And I was like, "No, I haven't." So right then, three in the morning, Camp Decision.